big measures in the balance sheet. Now that we have learned how to prepare an income statement and a balance sheet, it is important to take a larger view of these documents, and in particular of the balance sheet. Indeed, the income statement is the easier to understand. It is, over a period of time, the sales minus the cost to create these sales. And it is important to remember that all the items are value, not necessarily cash. So let's look at the balance sheet, the asset side and the liability side. On the asset side, the top part is called the fixed assets. And when we include the cumulative amortization, the net fixed assets. And the rest is called the current assets current assets, made of stocks, client IOUs, cash and bank, and quasi-cash, that is short-term financial assets, cash parked in order to create some revenues. And on the liability side, we have three parts, value or financing coming from the owners, called the net worth, also called the equity. Secondly, financing that comes from borrowing from a bank or from markets that I call costly debt and usually we just call them the debts and a third item which I call the free debt which are the credits that naturally come from operations from suppliers and other creditors First of all, when we study a balance sheet, it is useful to represent it geometrically, with boxes proportional to the various items. So let's do it uh, with our balance sheet. We, do, we draw th two boxes of 530 high each. So we have to, to choose a scale, which will be something like this. This will be for the asset side and a similar box of the same height for the liabilities. Liabilities, it will also have the height 530. On the asset side, the net fixed assets are 200. So they go up to here, 200 net fixed assets. And the rest, 330, is, as we saw, the current assets. And on the liability side, the net worth is 350, so that's up to there, 350 net worth, also called the equity. And then we have two uh, debt items the costly debt of 100, let's call them just the debt, and the free debt of 80. With this representation, geometric representation, we have a better view or perception of the, the relative importance of the various items. We see that the firm is mostly made of current assets, which are stocks, or clients, as we saw, short-term financial securities, and cash and bank. And on the liability side, it has comparatively a lot of equity and little debts, since the debts are 100 compared to 350. So now let's look at the big measures, important measures, in such a balance sheet. I reproduce the same balance sheet. And we shall first of all talk about the capital employed. Capital employed, that's a measure on the liability side. Capital employed is also abbreviated CE. Let's represent them, represent them in, in red. It's the sum of the equity plus the debt, the costly debt specifically. So this is the capital employed. The capital employed are very important concept because they represent the funds that the firm got which require remuneration, which require to be paid. 
uh, on a yearly basis, either with interest charges or uh, less regularly with dividends. Whereas the free debt, as the name indicates, uh, come for free, from free, uh, and they just come from operations. So this is the capital employed. And uh, uh, they are remunerated, as I said, with uh, either dividends or interest charges. Now that we have defined the capital employed, let us define the working capital. The working capital is the part of the capital employed that, fi that uh, finance on the asset side something else than the net fixed assets. So here is the way it is represented. We have the capital employed that are up to here. And we mark the net fixed assets. This part here is the working capital. That is, in other words, it is the part of the funds employed, if we prefer, we can say also funds employed for capital employed, that finances not the net fixed assets, but more. So finances some of the stocks, perhaps some of the clients' at, uh, items, and perhaps even some cash. It can also be a negative figure, the working capital. When we found a firm, we need initial capital, and for a while it will be all the liabilities and, and therefore also all the assets. Therefore, it must finance the fixed assets, the stock, the clients, and the cash at first. And after a while, the operations will generate profit, cash, and free financing, the free debt, as we saw. And remember, profit is not cash. And uh, we may make a profit but have no cash or see our cash go down. And conversely, we can make a loss and have plenty of cash and even see our cash go up. To finish this lesson, let's uh, study once again something that can be called the basic operation of a firm. Here is the uh, balance sheet that we just saw. Let's take an item from the stock. Take an item from stock and suppose this item is worth 50 that is we take something that is half of the stock and we sell it at a higher price of course we sell it at 120 therefore this uh, transaction creates a, a profit of the transaction of 120 minus 50 equals 70 so, uh, let's see the impact of this transaction on this balance sheet. Let's do that in red. Well, the stock will go from 100 to 50, so we should reduce the size of this box. If we sell this item for cash, well, then 70 will become 190 that is 70 plus the cash from the sales 120 if it's a sale on credit it would be this item clients that would go up and this of course will means an extra uh, 70 of uh, profit and therefore an increase in the assets and on the liability side the debts do not change it is the equity that goes from 350 to 420 and this also changes to 600.